Hey friends, we're hanging out outside today. We're talking market strategy out in the public because I wanted to get some fresh air. I wanted to step away from the desk a little bit. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the global central banking crisis, the chaos that's happening right now across the world, the confusion that we are apparently seeing across all the central banks, UK Central Bank, Canadian Central Bank, Australian Central Bank, and of course here, the US Federal Reserve. And then we'll talk about the, the 20th Party Congress meeting that China is going through right now and my, my assessment of the situation and a couple other things. So it's pretty clear that central bankers and leaders they're very concerned about inflation. Look, I'm concerned about inflation. You're concerned about inflation. The, the situation at the grocery store right now, how prices are this high, it, it's not sustainable. And how it's becoming more expensive to do just about anything. Have a roof over your head, get food to eat, being able to buy a car. Everything has just gotten ridiculously expensive. So I want to just make today super informal, casual. And it's not inspiring in how the central banking leaders are dealing with this issue. They're raising rates to combat demand when a lot of the inflation issue is a supply-driven thing, like you guys already know. Let's talk about the UK. So we saw in the news recently that the UK new finance minister scraps almost all planned tax cuts in bid to appease markets. So since when was that a good idea to cut taxes in the UK during an epic time of inflation? And the UK is going through a tremendous recession right now and energy costs are going through the roof for a lot of UK citizens. And I just feel bad for all our friends from the UK. If you're from the UK, you're from Europe, please let me know in the comments below, what's the living situation like there right now? I'd love to know. On top of this, Liz Truss, she's the prime minister. A lot of people are saying that she won't be able to stay in office for that much longer because of the flip-flop that she's going through when it comes to monetary policy and her staff personnel. Now, outside of the UK, across the world, we have other central banks that are kind of indicating that they might give up on their fight on inflation. And I know Australia and Canada, they, their central banking leaders say that they're going to do whatever it takes to get inflation back down to 2%. But if you noticed, the Australian central bank, the RBA, they actually raised rates by far less than economists and analysts expected. And so their words and their actions kind of differ from one another. Now we know Australia, a lot of those rate hikes are more sensitive to the economy because a lot of the real estate costs there, they're, they're, they're variable. The mortgage costs, they're, they're variable. The mortgage rates are variable. In Canada, there's, there's an anticipation that the next rate hike is going to be 50 basis points rather than 75. So globally, we're already seeing a lot of the central banking leaders start to reduce the pace of tightening. And so the only central bank really that has yet to do that is, is the Fed. And, and we're going to see how much longer they can keep up this facade that they can raise rates to match CPI because I, I personally think that that's not going to happen. And here's why. The US federal deficit is massive. It's very, very large. And with the Fed funds rates now at 3, 3 to 3.25% with a target of over 4% by the end of this year and potentially touching 5% next year, the U.S. literally can't borrow as much as they used to without incurring a significant amount of interest costs. And so if the government wants to continue spending, in order to promote economic growth, it's impossible for the Fed to keep raising rates to match the inflation CPI. We'll see. Let me know in the comments below how far you think the Fed is going to raise rates. But I think 
that they pause around 5%. I don't think that they can raise rates far beyond 5% without causing economic Armageddon here in, in the US. I mean, Fed funds rates, it's three to 3.25%. 3 and we're already seeing mortgage demand collapse. We're seeing car demand collapse. And while that's important and that's going to bring down headline CPI, it's not moving the needle in the inflation index that most people care about, and that's food. So I was at Wegmans the other day, and I am just shocked at how much groceries cost relative to going out to eat. There's, there's really not a very large gap when it comes to going grocery shopping versus going out to eat. That, that gap is there, obviously, but, it, but it's not very large, and that's, and that's kind of concerning. Now, another thing that I want to talk about is the 20th Party Congress meeting in China. And it was a very nationalistic speech by Xi Jinping. And there was a, there was a direct response to the US export semiconductor ban. And it's that China is going to pursue strategic deterrence and they're going to resolutely win the war in technology. So if I were to translate that to you, that essentially means that China is going to go full force into investing in their high tech sector. But when they say that they want to increase their strategic deterrence, it also means I'm hearing that that means military buildup, and that's, that's pretty serious. So this economic cold war that's happening between the US and China, I wrote a Twitter thread on this. You can take a look, it's link in the description below. It's, it's going to the next level. And in my opinion, if things, if the relationship doesn't get better between the two countries, I think that there could be there could be military clashes in the future. And, and that's not good because we, we've seen the destruction that Russia and Ukraine have already brought. And to have China and the US clash, that, that is something that we definitely um, don't want to see. And in the meantime, in the meantime, we're seeing, we're seeing the Chinese internet sector trade at valuations that we've never really seen before. The, the Hang Seng Tech Index, the forward PE, it's at decade lows. Alibaba right now, they're trading near 10 times forward PE. That's, that's a historic low for the company. And given how large they are in China, it tells you how, how, how big the economic struggles are, um, are there locally. Now, in my opinion, um, this is definitely the time to hold strong. This is definitely the time to take a step back, have a longer term view, and just remember that investments is just one part of your wealth building strategy. It's important to do well at your job, to impress your managers, get a promotion. If you're an entrepreneur, it's important to serve your clients well make them happy and do whatever you can to have a strong, positive reputation. Look, we're in a recession and there's no doubt about it that things are really tough for the average person right now. Of course, if you're in the top 1%, this environment hasn't impacted you at all. But if you're a typical good American citizen, this is a really tough time right now. Food's expensive, it's expensive to own a home, apartments are expensive, transportation's expensive, and really the Fed has been able to stop the price increases for housing and cars, but it hasn't been able to completely halt the price increases for food, transportation costs, and medical services. So in my opinion, the net direction of inflation, it's coming down. Inflation has peaked. 
but I think it stays stubbornly at this level for a couple months. And that means that the stock market is going to be a place of uncertainty, at least for the foreseeable future. But for long-term investors, this is probably a good time to start fishing for the best opportunities. Join my email list below. I'm sharing a lot of exclusive content with as many friends as possible. My investment community, I'm sharing as much high quality research to help our friends inside navigate this incredibly diff difficult environment. Um, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. And um, guys, I'll, I'll, see, I'll see you in my next video.